Okay, so we have this void that we feel about our lives and we want to fill it up and we go about it in many different ways. And one of the ways is to try and fit in and to create these relationships. Um, but the void doesn't go. Even though we, it goes away temporarily, but not, not uh, completely. And so what happens is we have this uh, ego entity within us. So if we think of Gurudev's BMI chart, then we have the personality at the level of body, mind, and intellect. And this we can call, yeah, we can call it our ego entity. So it's who we think we are. So when we say me, ego is the sense of me. And then me has many definitions or descriptions. So who am I? And then we would have created descriptions over the years of who it is we are. So this is what happens. The underneath layer, the essence of who we are is, if we're using Gurudev's BMI chart, is Om. And so we are divinity. And then divinity has a nature. And the nature of divinity is to love. The nature of divinity is infinite. The nature of divinity is freedom. Right, because infinite means you're free. There's nothing else, there's no boundary to hold us. So the nature is to be free and the nature is to be uh, creatively expressive. The whole concept of Maya existing in Brahman is to say that we are creatively expressive. So then this is our divine nature, this is who we are. We are love, we are joy, we are peace, we are free. And so we, we feel we are these things because that's our nature at the level of Om, at the level of essence. Then as though, please note the words as though, a layer comes to cover this. Yeah. In, in technical Vedanta, it will be the um, Vasana layer, the Anandamaya Kosha. And so this layer that, that comes to cover now is veiling. So suddenly now, I don't know. So the layer of vasanas is unmanifest and I don't know. The layer of vasanas is also ignorance and so I don't know. So in the underneath layer, Om, at the layer of Om, I know. I'm consciousness, so I know, and I am free, and I am love, and I am bliss, and I know who I am, and I know everything I need to know. And then there's this layer, which is our vasanas, and this layer's personality is, I don't know. It's made out of ignorance. So now I feel both things. I feel I know, and I also feel I don't know. And so we'll, we'll notice this about ourselves. When somebody is tra trying to tell us something, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and then when we're trying to figure out a problem, I don't know what to do. I don't understand quite what's going on here. They do. So it's these different layers of our personality that have the nature of I know and I don't know. Then there's another layer of our personality, the intellect, which is knowledge and logic and understanding and reasoning and the sense of doing what is right and adhering to our duty, finding meaning, finding purpose, and so now, this is who I am. I want to find meaning. I want to find purpose. 
I want to understand. I want to do what's right. And there's the next layer of the personality, which is the mind. And the mind is, the nature of the mind is, I want. <laughs> what? Pretty much anything. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, the once in the ashram, we had all these normal H2 pencils. Every kid has so many H2 pencils. We live in such a uh, comfortable society where there is no lack. And it's not an exciting, colorful pencil. It's an H2 pencil. It's not like it's got designs on it, because then kids get excited about that, right? That if it has a balloon on it or something like that. It was like plain blue. Can't get more boring. <laughs> Because we had quite a few of them, I some kid asked, I said, take it. Everybody wanted. And it's like, don't you have a pencil? Yeah, but if you gave him, why are you not giving me? <laughs> a pencil. <laughs> I want. Why? Because you're giving. I want. <laughs> it was crazy. Of course, I love emptying out the ashram, so I gave every kid a pencil. <laughs> Two sometimes, <laughs> if the other kids aren't watching, because now, yay, I'm done, I'm finished, I don't have any. But it really amused me that there was really nothing exciting, and they still wanted it. And they they kids, you know, adults do this. It's on sale, it's free, like get one buy one, get one free, you don't need it, but take it because it's free. As adults, we do this, but the kids, like at such a young age, they did it. it it's really interesting. So nature of the mind, I want. What do I want? Actually, it doesn't matter. The nature of the mind is, I want. Um, nature of the mind is also, I like, I don't like. And nature of the mind is, I get bored. So I want, and as long as I want it, I'm interested. Literally, the minute I have it, I'm not interested anymore. Because nature of the mind is, I want, not I have. <laughs> so um, nature of the body. Well, our bodies have different temperaments. And so some will want warm, some will want cold, some will want uh, lots of food, some will want less food. The body will have its own nature. But <clears throat> so now, what am I saying? We have now collected so many layers of our personality, and each layer of our personality has a nature. And so we are now a collection of natures. With the nature of our body, our mind, our intellect, our vasanas, and om. But each one of our bodies are different. Each one of our mind and intellects are different. And so each one of our personalities are different. So I am love belongs to om. But it filters through these personality layers. So how I love will depend on the personality layers. And so this is how I show love. And how is that? For each one of us will be different. And so one of the ways in which we show love is um, honest and upfront and straight with you. Right? And I would say it as it is. And, you know, um, want you to be perfect because I love you. And so you have to, I will um, demand that you be uh, more proficient, more efficient, more capable, more um, disciplined, more, and, and why? Because I love you. But love doesn't do that. Love doesn't want a person to be more capable, more efficient. What wants the person to be more capable, more efficient? It will probably be the mind and intellect layer. 
their intellect has a certain judgment of this is good. And so then, but at the layer of, oh, I'm love, and so I think I'm love. And then, then I'm, but I'm also thinking I'm the intellect, and the intellect has made a judgment that this is good. So then love filters through that judgment and says, love is when I make you disciplined, make you when I am fair, when I am whatever it is the judgment is. So we, we tend to end up loving through the filter of our personality, which then in a way, a nice way to say it would be to colors the love, but what I actually want to say is pollutes the love. Pollute doesn't sound nice, but that's what it does. Because love by itself is accepting and giving and patient and it, it sees beauty even when the thing is not completely beautiful. I'll see the beautiful bit. And I'll appreciate the bits that are beautiful. Um, but in the personality layers, I want to make it perfect. So now love is making you perfect. Which now is hard work for you to live up to my idea of what is perfect. Yeah. And so the conditioning that comes into our love. So at the level of form, we love unconditionally. But then actually when we love through our personalities, we love conditionally. And the conditionings come through the layers of our personalities. And then depending on the personalities, we as though play roles. So love is, I am nurturing, I am caring, I am giving, I am supporting, I am accommodating. Or love is, um, I am empowering, I am bringing you out the potential in you, I am, um, being honest so that you can grow, I am um, going to be the voice of um, maybe not criticism. The person would probably think of it as the voice of honesty. So I'll tell you what other people won't tell you so that you can one, no, and two, improve. And so each one of us ex have experienced being loved in this way, right? Like I have definitely be experienced being loved as somebody wanting to take care of me and nurture me and comfort me and make everything better. And I've also been loved in, you know, the rest of Hong Kong won't tell you this, but this is what they sing about you. <laughs> um, how will we receive it will depend on our personality type. But here, I'm going to talk more about giving. So, at the layers of our personality, at the level of Om, I am free and I am all powerful. At the level of mind and intellect, I'm not free. I know only certain things. I have only certain amount of money. I have only certain amount of influence over other people. I have only certain amount of resources in terms of technology. And so I am limited. But I desire 
to be all powerful because at the level of own, I'm all powerful. So this desire for power runs very deep in us. There's, we can break up all our desires into three categories. Desire for pleasure, which we are familiar with, right? All uh, the marketing, lots of pleasures that we desire. Desire for power. Again, this comes in many different forms, many different uh, ways in which we desire power. <clears throat> and then we desire um, attention or um, recognition, status. We desire uh, acknowledgement. And that can also be in varying ways. So now, when I love, and the personality will influence how I love, my desire for power also plays a role in how I love. So if I do desire power, then I love asserting power. And there is a belief, unconscious, that if you love me, you'll allow me this power. It's not a conscious belief, but I want power. So I assert it. And then, of course, not everyone can. Both people are asserting power, the relationship's not going to work. <laughs> so some people will say, okay, <laughs> you have the power. And so maybe their desire is not for power, their desire is for acceptance. Or maybe their desire is for a non, mm, what's the word? They just don't want any kind of conflict. Huh? Non-confrontational. So their personality layer, this is the desire. So love is me being non-confrontational. Love is me being um, accepting. Love is me being maybe not putting up with, but basically. Yeah, but that's how I'll show I love. I put up. Right? How much this is how much I love you. I put up with XYZ. This is how much I love you. I, I allow. So this is this comes through our personality rates and it it dilutes the way in which we can love unconditionally because then we start to love in a particular way. So we love in a way that is assertive. We love in a way that is accommodating. We love in a way that is um diplomatic we love in a way that is so now we don't just love we love in a particular way so the layer of all i love comes forward and gets bound or conditioned rather by a personality trait so what we want is to express our nature right so a flower will want to express its nature of beauty, color, fragrance. And if it can't, it will feel void or it will feel 
restricted. It will feel something's missing. It hasn't fulfilled its full purpose. So here's us. And at the layer of Aum, we want to express love, which is unconditional. And we're expressing it but we're expressing it through personality layer. And so we're expressing it in a particular way, whether it be assertive, accommodating, adjusting, diplomatic, I'm not quite sure the words that we can use, but whatever way in which it is that I love. So I'm loving, but because there's a conditioning, I don't feel fulfilled. So, this journey to love is a spiritual journey because I have to learn to love beyond my personality layer. So for as long as I play a role, I stay limited. And all of us play roles, right? Some of us have to nurture. Or some of us have to be right. Some of us have to be the one who makes the decisions or fixes the problem. Or I think I think I gave the example. Um, like socially, we I don't know if I gave the example. Like in the Friends episode, Chandler feels he has to be the one who's funny. And I don't know if maybe Rachel feels she has to be the one that's fashionable. I don't know if she does or doesn't. But to varying extent, we feel we have to be the one that's the giver, the one that's the leader, the one that's the peacemaker, the one that's the... And then that restricts us because we play one role. And we're loving only in that way. And when it's not working out that way, we're uncomfortable. Now, at the layer of our mind and intellect, maybe there's a desire for that role or some purpose is served for us to play that role. But it's still a limitation because the nature to be able to love is not at the level of mind and intellect. Our nature to be able to love is at the level of own. So Gurudev uses these words, um, sadist and madis, masochist, sadist and masochist. They no longer, we would no longer use those words um, because today they are loaded with, um, what's the word? They mean something very different, basically in today's world, but we can more or less introspect. This is, this is I think, what Gurudev is calling us to do. In our relationships, are we struggling to assert power or are we putting up with the other person asserting power? I mean, there's lots more in a relationship. There's, and it's not so black and white necessarily, but there is this tendency that it, it can boil down to this in the sense that one person slightly bullies the other person or a lot bullies the other person. And we, we 
there's, we have terms in our um, relationship lingo to suggest this person is completely dominated by, and it need not be a spouse, huh? as Gurudev mentioned, it could be a parent, it could be a sibling, it could be a boss. Um, and so then love becomes about power rather than about love. That's basically what Gurudev is trying to say. And so for me to introspect, how much power am I asserting or demanding in my different relationships? How do I demand relationships? Well, I want things my way. And then of course, to take it even further, I want to change the other person. And that's really me wanting power. Like you can't even be you. You have to be who I want you to be. And that's totally me asserting power. But even if I say, fine, you be you, but we are going to do what I want. That's also me asserting power. Thank you. I remember I had gone to some workshop and the workshop wasn't about love. The workshop was actually about money. So I don't know why we did this activity, but and I don't know why I was at the workshop, but you know. <laughs> and they had this scenario and they said, one person wants to go to um, Italian for dinner. So let's say you were two friends going out for dinner one person wants to go to Italian and one person wants to go for whatever, Mexican, Chinese, you choose. How do you decide where you go? They gave us half an hour to figure this out. Do you think you need half an hour to figure it out? Yeah? You need half an hour? No, you don't? Where would you go? How would you decide? Why would you let the other person decide? You're giving away power? You'd give away power. So easy. This is what we do in relationships. A lot of people will give power. Yeah, you decide. Why? Keep the peace. That's not the solution. Hmm. You're surprised. <laughs> yep, that's not the solution. Why? Because there isn't equal amount of power. One person gave away power. That's not a solution. Okay, going out for dinner is fine. Higher purpose of keeping the peace. I'm going out for dinner. Maybe I really don't care so much. Maybe I'm not a foodie. Maybe I already ate already. <laughs> All of that. Let's say I want the kids to pray before sleeping. Spouse doesn't. There's no God. I want the kids to uh, speak politely to the helper. Spouse says, leave them alone. They're having a bad day. So what if they scream? And I say, no, it's not okay. Even if they're having a bad day, why should they make her day worse? Bad enough, you having a bad day. <laughs> That's not me. Anybody else's day worse. They, they have to apologize. They cannot yell at her. Now, Let's say I want to give in charity. 
I think it's an important thing to do. I think the cause is very worthwhile. You don't. It's our money. Now what we need to do. Going out for dinner is easy. <laughs> now how do we decide? And these are very real problems, right? These are the problems that people have. This is how marriages break. Whether they actually get divorced or not, they break. Family members drift. How? How are we going to choose? How do we divide the power? Engage in dialogue. <laughs> what if the other person doesn't engage in dialogue? There's a lot of people who won't. My way or the highway. Or they don't know how to. There's a cultural difference. Because engaging dialogue is a very Western thing, right? And actually, most of, lots of people I know, not very Western, what's the dialogue business? I didn't have to sit and discuss with my father. You, my child, you listen to me, as long as you live in this house. <laughs> There's no dialogue. When there's love, and if I think my love is you will listen to me, do what I want you to do, and then I'm convinced that's love, I cannot be fulfilled. Even if you listen to me, I won't be fulfilled. Because my very understanding of love is incorrect. And so even when it's fulfilled, it's limited. And I remain with a void. Which is why there are so many people on this planet Life is good. I have a good wife, good husband, good children. Why am I feeling void? It's because even though we're receiving love, it's conditioned. And we conditioned it. It's not even that the other person conditioned it. They do too, because, you know, we all in the same. We all loving through our personalities. But the problem is I condition my love through my personality. And so I am still experiencing limited. When what I want to experience is unconditional. And infinite. So, the roles we play, we have to recognize if they functional roles or if they have become a desire for the way in which we want to experience love. What do I mean? Functionally, if I'm a teacher, I have to discipline, I have to arrange, I have to. Or is this now how I see love, that you will listen to me? And if you don't listen to me, then you don't love me. Whereas if I know it's just a role I'm playing, you don't listen to me, you could still love me because I don't need you to play the role 
that is opposite the role I'm playing for me to understand you love me. You don't have to fulfill the desire that my personality has for me to know you love me. But more importantly, you don't have to play your role for me to love you. You don't have to fulfill my desire for me to love you. Now that's huge. That's really where we need to get to because the love that we feel is not the love that other people give us. The love that we feel is the love that we have, that we give other people. So if you notice when other people love us, we feel it, we enjoy it, and then it's gone. That's why we want it again. But when we love other people, we're feeling it all the time. Because it's me that's loving. And I'm with me all the time. So whether their love is conditional or not actually doesn't matter. What matters is, is my love conditional or not? And then in so many ways we do this. Sometimes we do it in very obvious ways, like this, if you don't listen to me, I won't love you. Or if you don't belong to a certain stereotype that I feel I belong to, then I don't love you. And that can be gender, that can be race, that can be religion, that can be a social economic status, right? So I only love Hindus. I only love rich people, poor people. Poor people only love poor people. You're not allowed to love rich people. <laughs> Vice versa, right? And we see this. We see this happening. Um, and so the journey here is, this is why loving is such an incredibly spiritual thing. To be able to love without holding on to a role. And so if I'm loving without a role, the love can take any shape. And so now I know in today's world, we have these different books about you know, love languages is one of the very, very popular books. And then um, I guess it's a, it boils down to love languages. And then we, we say, it's okay, this person loves this way. Mm, I'm sorry, guys, it's not okay. The journey is to be able to love in every way. So sometimes people love by giving, but they're not good at taking. So sometimes people love by doing a lot. But they're not good at just sitting still. So this is why love is so it's really the essence of all. Because you have to be able to love while giving, love while taking, love while having power, love when you don't have power. Love when you're doing something, love when you're not doing something, love when they love you back, love when they don't love you back. So we have to be able to love in all roles. And if the role changes or if the role's not matched or if it's not successful, to be able to continue to love. So it's really, really quite beautiful. So I didn't use any of the vocab that Gurudev used because, like I said, Gurudev's 
wrote this book in 1960s and I think uh, things had different connotations or maybe Gurudev just used it in a way that was non-conventional. But this is the idea. This is the idea. Which role am I attached to? Which way am I attached to receiving love? Which way am I attached to giving love? And then remember, attachment isn't love. Attachment is me getting stuck in comfort zone and me wanting what I want. So to be able to break free from any kind of conditionings that is there in our personality layers so that we can love unconditionally. So usually we, yeah, so when we say the word love unconditionally, we think without any expectations. But it's also the conditioning of our personality and our beliefs, right? We Our beliefs also come into it. Okay. Any questions? Because we have to start the next section. <laughs> even though I've gone on for quite a while. No? We good? Yeah. 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 So I have to do what I think is right. Yeah. But the challenge is not me knowing what's right. The challenge is you not liking me for choosing that. So I have to be okay with you being angry and I'm not listening to you but still love you. Um, and allow you to express your anger or whatever it is that you need to express. And I have to make sure that I'm doing it because I think it's right and not just to irritate you or to be uh, controlling you. So there's a lot of introspection that's required. The other person may not understand. And then if I truly love, there will be other opportunities for me to be able to express that love or give that care, which will then win the person's respect. But it doesn't need to be that in this incident, I need to win the person's respect. But that still makes life pretty messy because people do get angry and upset. And remember when it's it's a play of power, very tricky, which is, yeah, that's even in parenting, that's one of the first things. Don't get into a power struggle with the kid. If it's a fight of will and doom, <laughs> has to be about, it can't be you have to do it because I said so. It can't be that has to be, we're doing this because it's the right thing to do. Not because I said so, but because it's the right thing to do. And then I guess that has to follow through in all the other things that I do. At no point can it be we're doing this because I said so. But I, I mean, if I'm the type of person that says we're doing this because I said so, 
And then it comes to something that is important like this, which is, you know, praying or money or charity. And then, then it just becomes another thing where I'm fighting for power. And it's not easy to do, but it has to become about the issue rather than the power, which takes a while because all of us do want power, but we have to be incredibly aware of how much we are asserting it. And you know, I think it really also matters how sincere we are um, in our belief that something is right. Because I've seen, like, you know, some parents' kids will sometimes oppose, they don't want to come to Bal Bihar. And there are some parents who are like, well, this is non negotiable. You just have to go to Bal Bihar. Um, and it's not about power, it's because this knowledge is important for you. And I think it the parents who really feel it, I've noticed the kids don't um, fight it as much because they can see it's a mom really values this or dad really values this, more than uh, they forcing me to do something. And then I have seen other parents also, and maybe not that they don't value it as much, or maybe they're not uh, how to express it. Maybe they're, they're not as efficient in expressing how much they value it, and it comes across as, you have to go. Those kids put up such a fight. Yeah. So, a lot of it is about how we as an individual evolve and are able to hold our strength, our love, our power. More than wield it, how we able to hold it and be comfortable with it. Whereas in worldly interactions, we tend to wield power over other people, not just own that this is mine. So there's no quick fix. It really does have to be about who we are and how we say it. Yeah. And it's not, not just tone. It's about who we are. When we say something, it's who we are. When it when it's true to who we are, it, the other person can't fight it. When it's not true to who we are, and I see this so often, I see you know, parents telling kids something and the kid turning around and say, you don't do that. So, um, Yeah, it's, it's not about it. I know we can get really stuck in solving the situation or this dilemma, but the, the really the journey is about who we are and how we can recognize personality limitations within us and overcome the personality limitations within us. But in that particular scenario, to be true to what you believe to be right. And so I'm not saying it to be right, I'm saying it because it is right, or I believe it to be right. Yeah. Okay, so Gurudev, and we spoke about this last week, Gurudev makes this distinction between sneha and prema. And so when we love through our conditionings, it's sneha. And when we love as om without conditioning, it's prema. And so also this Gurudev has written in the book, which is um, when, we, when we have prema, it frees us and it empowers us. And when we have sneha, we have all these complications. 
should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? This one wants this, but I don't want this. And, we we've all felt prim. We feel empty because it's neha, correct. And we've even if we haven't felt prema in this life, we all have this residue memory of before we were bound. We don't we don't consciously remember what we felt like when we were om and all knowing and all blissful. None of us consciously remember, but it's there. And that's why we won't put up with. That's why we're like, eh, this is not it. <laughs> yeah, we have romantic notions. I mean, media has really <laughs> done a great job in us having romantic notions. <laughs> Even the most violent movie will have one short two-minute romance at the end. <laughs> um, why do we have romantic notions? Because we don't want to work. I think that's why we have romantic notions because we don't want to work we don't want to acknowledge that it's work it's a lot of alertness of our thinking and changing of our thinking if you think about what maya is maya is this made-up story all the romantic notions are made up stories. <laughs> the perfect Maya, <laughs> all these romantic notions. <laughs> we make up stories on how it's going to be amazing. The truth is, amazing comes after work. Even in the simplest of things, you sit on a Sunday and do nothing. Is it amazing? Sometimes? No. No, it's not. Unless you sit. You go for a walk. And I'm not even saying a strenuous gym. Huh? You come back, you're full. you feel way better. I'm not even saying strenuous, just a nice walk. You do something, you feel better. Doing nothing doesn't help us feel better. People who win the tax lotto, they're not ecstatic, I mean, in that moment. One year later, most of them have lost their money. You know this, right? It's well documented. Most people who win the tax lot have lost their money within a year. They now miserable. <laughs> Why? Came too easy. Do you remember your first paycheck? Mine was pittance. <laughs> I think mine was something like 50 Australian dollars or something. <laughs> oh, so good. I don't know why we think if we just get it, it will be good. I don't know where that notion has come from. Because the truth of it is, if you just get it, it's not good. We don't value it. Or we feel we don't deserve it.
and we work for something even not even big things huh? we feel incredible sense of fulfillment when we do things ourselves okay we conclude Anybody online has questions? Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. I want to know what was the story behind that eventually deciding on the dinner place? How do you decide? What did you do? It was a half an hour discussion. I explained, no, <laughs> that it's who you are. <laughs> It's understanding how much power you are asserting. And it's about understanding how much you give in and why. Like, why do you assert the power? Why do you not assert the power? It's really not about what you decide. It's about understanding how you got to that decision. Did you assert power? Yeah. See, there was a movie I saw based on this that she knew the guy that she was dating was going to say, let's go for Japanese. So she said, let's go for uh, Chinese. But all along she wanted Italian. And so because they disagreed, then she finally said, okay, let's just go somewhere neutral. And so she manipulated the whole thing from, from the very beginning. She anticipated what he was going to say. She set up her argument so that she would get what she wants. So it looks like it was a beautiful compromise and they went for Italian and they didn't go to Japanese and they didn't go to Chinese, but she was completely asserting power. It's not about the end result. It's about how much each one of us are asserting or giving in. And if you're giving in, why? because they will love me if I am non confident no well non, non not high maintenance yeah then people will love me yeah. and if that's my belief that's the way I condition love and then I'm not really loving because I'm just letting everyone win and I'm not letting me be me and the other way is also true if I keep trying to change you, I'm not really loving you. Because I have to just be me and Om loves unconditionally. So it's not about where, what you end up with. I mean, the scenario is, you know, so many people said they went to a food court, which has both. And so one ate this and one ate that. Other people said, this time we'll do this and next time we'll do that. And all of that works as long as I'm not trying to control you. Basically, it's me controlling myself not to control you. And it's also me controlling myself not to allow you to control me. Both. That's, that's the main thing to understand. I hope I answered. It is hard. It is hard. Um, and that's why I said it's the journey. Thank you. Yeah, there is a lot of conditioning. And slowly but surely. And the beautiful thing about love is the moment we start loving more, love incredibly... It's incredible. It purifies everything so quickly. It, it feels like it's a long journey, but actually it's not. If you start loving, actually you get there very quickly. But you just have to consciously start loving. It, it actually happens very fast. Because love is that powerful. It's that potent. It's that purifying. Oh. 
सर्वे 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 ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मृतंगमय ओ पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुत पूर्ण पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शांति शांति शांति